Hello, beautiful people. Welcome to a new episode of Vedic Spirituality. Um, it has taken almost two months since I uh, did my last video. And the reason is that I am trapped in the rat race of Western society and just simply do not have time to devote myself to new videos or astrology at large even. So however, um, I was requested for uh, giving some interpretation of the upcoming solar eclipse. Uh, what screen are you actually seeing? Let's look at it like this. So we, are, we will talk about the solar eclipse on the 14th t December 2020. And to analyze an eclipse, we have to understand that the eclipses are coming in cycles. And this is a Babylonian system, and these cycles are called Saros cycles. And what these cycles will bring, so what is this, um, this, what impulses are set free by this eclipse? We have to understand the context of the cycle. So we have to analyze the very first eclipse of that cycle to understand what the cycle is about, what the cycle is about. So, therefore, we are looking at this chart here. This is from the 17th April 1624. And also one in interesting thing uh, or important thing to note in regard of the sorrow cycles is that the signification is very s uh, mi minimal. It's just in the form of a seed in the very beginning. And as the cycle matures, the eclipses will become more intense. It will become full eclipses. And also this signification will mature more and will exhibit its meaning or e results more. So what this cycle is about. So that is my personal interpretation using Brigo astrology techniques. And yeah, let's get, get into it. So there are three points actually that I just want to talk about which uh, like reveal themselves to me. And that is that we have the car the karana is uh, naga so karana means literally it means reason so the karana is uh, one part of the five limbs of time panjanga and it expresses the reason of birth what is the why we came here what we are supposed to do here or what's the the undefulfilled desire that we came to fulfill so naga nakshat karana has to do with um, it's Naga means snake, so it's reptilian. It has to do with mystical powers, with secretive societies, with uh, underworld stuff. And it's ruled by Rahu also, who is uh, a significator of these things. Um, this is from my... Excuse me. Uh, this is from my textbooks here. It says that a possible reason for incarnation indicates a desire to gain a mystical power, to commit the committing of torches, false eclipsing or a secret acts a connection with the underworld so <coughs> and um, the sun and the moon and Rahu Ketu they are the main actors of an eclipse so it's between them the sun and the moon they are the significator of the self and <coughs> they are here in the 11th degree of areas and that degree is connected to the Vahi Murta, which is about transportation, going in a direction, going in a certain development. And now Rahu Ketu come, they eclipse, and they are in the Ratrinart, in the 24th degree, which is connected to Ratrinart Muhurta. So one very interesting thing to note regarding Muhurtas, or also Nakshatras actually also, but uh, especially Muhurtas, that from the first to the 30th Muhurta, they are telling the tale of life how we are born and connected to our friends our ancestors and our childhood so it it is an ongoing story until we die we meet the in superintendent of death Yamaraj the Yamamuhurta we are getting the results of our deeds good and bad and we are taking place in, an, in the womb of a new mother where our body is built again and in the end, we will be forced out of the womb into the world again. And we start again the cycle with the first muhurta. So these muhurtas, 
they are the twenty, the thirty. If you divide a day into thirty, thirty parts, this is forty-eight minutes each muhurta. So each day with the sunrise to the next sunrise, they're going through these stages, like we're going from birth to death to rebirth, to taking shelter in the womb of a new mother. So this tale is every day is going from sunrise to sun to from sunrise to sunrise. In the same way also the planet as he enters a, a zodiac and travels from the from zero degree up to the twenty nine point nine 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 degree <laughs> he goes through this cycle um, from birth to death to rebirth preparing for the new birth so Ratrinath Muhurta is at the place 24 where it's the mother and Ratrinath is uh, interested it's um, the, the lord of the night it's the moon it's the name of the moon the moon is a significator of another and also the Lord of the Night, I mean, um, usually, at least in Vedic times, um, conception is done in the night. So, so Ratinan Murta is also connected to this uh, love, making of love, so to say, to, to procreate, the con conception, where, where the seed is put into the womb of the mother, where the embryo starts to develop until maturity of the pregnancy and then the 30th muhurta is vayu muhurta that then moves and forces out the child into the world so i'm telling you this because it is uh, important to understand uh, what i want to say with these readings so we are we are here in the 16th 17th century and something um, is an idea, so to say, an idea has taken birth here. That, and the reason behind the idea is something mystical, something secretive, something that wants to rule over others with mystical powers, with what was the words, are torches and falls. And <coughs> that is here in the in the state in the state where it puts its semen to fortify so that eventually after maturation it will come to life and take birth so <coughs> so what i noted here is um, there's a movement the world goes in a certain direction but there is a force uh, an occult sore force that eclipses this direction and puts a seed there for something to take birth and when it takes birth when th the time has matured and what I want to say and now, now this is the, the eclipse which is going to happen um, in two days and <coughs> here we see that the sun and the moon are in the 30th Muhurta in this Vayu Muhurta where now this child has come to full maturation it's really nine, mo nine months high pregnancy and the contractions are starting and now it's just any moment that seed which have been planted millennia or at least centuries ago is now there to take fru fru fructation so we are now living in a time the year 2020 where plants which were made centuries ago which were the foundation were laid centuries ago now the time has come that the seeds which were there they have matured to a full pregnancy and are ready to take birth so this is <laughs> um, what this horoscope tells me with this sorrow cycle and um, yeah if we we look at the world events uh, in the 16th century, this reformation happened. Um, the inauguration of the Jesuit order has happened. And those who know something about that, they know that they have taken a lot of influence in many world events and have been orchestrating many, many things over the centuries. And also they know that they have a specific plan that they want to manifest. And <coughs> it seems that now their plans have to come to a point where they really go all out. 
And that, that we can see also from Rahu Ketu this time it's again it's uh, again confirmed with the Naga Karana is again here. So so the reason of action here is again a gain of mystical power, power over others in a secretive way, not not respecting the the virtue of life, but being ready to do torturous acts. And <coughs> What this specific time, uh, uh, point in time is also about is uh, expressed through this Chesha Nakshatra, which is about power. The ruler, the deity of Chesha Nakshatra is Indra, which is the, the king of heaven. And it's about power and rulership. Mm -hmm. So this is also the basic theme. Whatever is happening now, it is about a power struggle. And those occult forces, Rahu, significant to Rahu, they are in the Vishnu nakshatra. They are trying to maintain their power. So whatever is or orchestrated at the moment with the elections in the U.S., with uh, the lockdowns all over the world, the, all these things are orchestrated in order to for these secretive societies and secret occult forces that they're trying to bring their plans to fructification or to full manifestation to maintain the power. Yeah. Yes. Um, <coughs> so now the, so the I um, note down to these few things that the underworld is trying to maintain their power. And now the big question is, uh, some kind of bird and new birth, new new life is going to happen now. The world will not be the same as it was the last decades. The coming decades will be so different. So is it good or bad? So that is the big question. And that we are going to, I will try to look into that in the next video. So therefore I suggest you very much that um, you subscribe to this <laughs> YouTube channel. You put some likes and you comment something so if I get enough feedback, enough likes to feel motivated, I will go and answer this question in the next video so show me some love, show me some attention by subscribing, liking, sharing please share it to everyone you might think of that is interested in this type of uh, in this subject matter and um, <coughs> if you are watching this on Instagram then please head over to my YouTube channel and subscribe there. All right. So <coughs> um, th there, of course, this is just a basic theme I want to talk about. There, of course, we can talk about all the other planets also, but um, that will be hours and hours we have to talk. I have done some notes, but I am not going to talk about it now. Um <coughs> yeah. One thing more I have to say is that uh, the aspects depend on the place you are in the world because um, if you're in Berlin, for, ex for instance, in Europe, the Lagna will be different than if you're in the US. And in both cases, the Lagna um, of the US, this is Washington here, um, it is in Cancer, will make the eclipse in the 10th house. So it is very much affecting the, the government. The same here, the Lagna is uh, Aquarius for, for the US, so the whole thing happens in the 10th house. So therefore, these struggles, they're becoming very much visible, to one because in the 10th house, it's in the in Vyoma Stana, in the, in the sky house, where it's visible for everyone. At the same time, it is just concerning the government. So therefore, these struggles now going on in the US government between the opposing parties, um, yeah, therefore, it's seen also here in this eclipse. And uh, interestingly enough, on the 14th, 12th is now the big show, big showdown, where the electoral, electoral, anyway, whatever college is um, giving the final votes. So, um, yeah. <coughs> and for Germany, Europe, like here in this, it is in the sixth house. So it is more about the common man, 
the common worker, the working class, who are affected by this. And here it's in the seventh house, so it's more the relationships and stuff. So however, um, let me know I should continue and make a second part where we will discuss about whether we're going to the new world order will be a benevolent new world order or it will be an enslaving new world order whether the light forces will win or the dark forces will win so thanks for listening thank you for your time much appreciated see you later <laughs>